Just like MLK, he also had a dream, but it was about wearing a suit of armor and peeing himself. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice we're going to demand it. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. I love that about you, right, Gina Grand? That's right. And bald, Brian. Not funny. So uh, somebody was tweeting me pictures of uh, the L.A. train station or oh, yeah. train oh, tracks or whatever. And uh, things are going well. Their it's ang- bad. Their angle was <laughs> how many people are stealing things off of cargo trains, I guess, stealing lots of boxes. Um, you know, a lot of Amazon boxes and stuff like that off the cargo trains and, you know, ripping them open. I, I guess it's just a grab bag you could have ordered. Right. You're basically Tom Hanks on an island. Huh. He's just waiting for shit to float, yep. and you you hope the flip-flops are in your size. It's basically <laughs> it's just people just tearing box. Now, I don't know what their batting average is because half these things got to be – Charm bracelets and oh, yeah. shoes uh, that yeah. don't fit them and hairbrushes, hair- cat food, <laughs> cat food, cat toys. Yeah, and so you just pull out the shit you want and throw the the boxes away. Um, but Are there a, a lot of COVID tests too. A lot of COVID what? Tests. A lot of COVID tests. tests as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was looking at it, and I wasn't really about the piracy part of it, the the crime part of it. I was more about the trash part of it. I cannot figure out why California is the tip of the, you know, we're going to put windmills on top of everyone's house and we're going to eliminate all internal combustion vehicles by 2025. And we're going to have an aisle for gender neutral kids. And it's just one big fucking trash heap. What, how does that work? Like, it's it's a garbage dump. LA is a is a garbage dump. Every time I go through downtown, I just see garbage everywhere and graffiti. It does it. I I I'm always curious. Like, how does it work? We California, we we pay maybe maybe second to New Jersey or whatever. We pay state taxes and we pay a lot of state taxes in California. I don't. Why are we the dirtiest? Why is LA the dirtiest? We're we're the shining beacon on a on a hill. We're we're the model for the rest of the we we claim we're the model for the rest of the country all the time. You guys should go along. Why is it such a garbage dump? When they pull oh. back to the long shot, it's more you see more surface area covered by trash than not. Yes, what I like uh, that's far you see far less land than you see trash. <laughs> I I don't it, it's like why does it not bump the mayor? Like, how can you run a city and see any of this and go, oh, Jesus Christ, uh, we're going to we, by the way, will put together a crack team of people to solve any problem, but not this one. We're, right. we're just not that into the it. most solvable problem. I, I know. Just get get everyone who's you know, has to work off some hours to the county because they got a DUI and give them a fucking stick and put a nail on the end of it and give them a hefty bag and un- unleash the hounds or something. Like, start over the graffiti, paint over the graffiti, pick up the garbage, pick up all the behind our studio. That's where people dump their large items oh, because God. we don't... Oh, those well, are for blood samples. Oh, Jesus. What we don't... With little purple caps? Yes. What we don't get, which I never understand, is if you drag a sofa to the curb, it will not get picked up. You have to... Look how the cushions will be gone. Yes. You'll have to deal with large item pickup right. or something like that. Now, back in the day, before China and Amazon and Ikea, if you dragged your sofa that you were done with, you, you're, you know, you're one you should have gone, you're going to old yeller on your sofa. You're putting a bullet in it. Right. Now, back in the day, someone like my mom would have found the sofa, yeah. brought the sofa back to our house, and then put a colorful sheet over the top of the sofa, and the sofa would not live mm-hmm. out on the street. But She's the original upcycler. Yes, but everything is cheap and abundant from China and Ikea and whatever. And it, it, a, a sofa, first off, I don't know if you guys, 
neither one of my parents bought one piece, uh, and including my grandparents. It's like three separate families. My grandparents, my mom, my stepdad, my my dad, my stepmom. Out of the three single-family homes, not apartment dwellers, mm. freestanding single-family homes, not as m- so much as an end table was purchased <laughs> from <laughs> zero to today. Like I, they, a, 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 there's no sectional. There's no we're going oh, furniture on. shop. They literally just moved it from one place to the other. They passed it down. They put a sheet over. They've literally never purchased a new piece of furniture. That was then. Now it's not a big ticket anymore. Like, to, your, the, yes. to your point, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, my <clears throat> apparently my parents bought this just gorgeous <clears throat> white Naga hide uh, love seat Naga that they hide. loved. <clears throat> and uh, as legend has it, I, I have a faint memory of it. I wanted to color. I had a bu- blue ballpoint pen. I asked my mom for a piece of paper. She oh, was on boy. the phone. She was Can't ignoring me, gave me half an envelope. Looked at the envelope, looked at the white Naga hide couch. I said, hold on. Why would I use this? Drew all over the couch, my beautiful artwork. They put an orange Afghan over it, had it for the next 20 years. Yes. I don't know. Did anyone live in a house where anyone bought a piece of furniture? No. In fact, the other way, we know you said you put things on the curb, it would get claimed within an hour. My mom went through a phase in the mid to late 90s where she would constantly be picking up uh, end tables or desks or, or chairs off of corners. You know, right. put them out, and she would refinish them. Right. You know what I mean? Just like a DIY. Was, uh, the HGTV had just come in to be. She's and, a keeper. Know, yeah, she'd just sand it, refinish it, do the crockle paint. Yeah, no, my mom wouldn't do any of that, but she would <laughs> dust it off and put it next to the sofa she pulled off someone's curb. Mm-hmm. But anyway, what I'm saying is, in terms of policy, if your policy is we will not pick pick up large items. You, you can drag your sofa to the, to the curb, but if you want to have it picked up by the city, that's going to take a bunch of phone calls or emails or something. Go on the app. Go on the app. Something. You're going to have to burn some calories yes. and, or if you take it to the dump, it's going to cost you 60 bucks mm-hmm. to dispose of it. So what that creates is beds and sofas and junk next to the street by the freeway behind us. So sorry, government, that's the way people work. So you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to factor factor that in. Or we have a lot of homeless people and a lot of thieves, and they go on to trains and they pull off boxes and they open them up and they, they're they not into recycling and they're not... It's like, look, you, you have a huge homeless problem. At a certain point, you started putting porta-potties Sadly, he started just putting porta potties on the sidewalk under the under the freeway overpass. All right. This is what happens. So we have a problem. It's a shit show. Can you do something about it? Does it come up in meetings? Or are we still just talking about being a beacon on the hill and transgender rights? How it doesn't seem like every 18 months there's a local news story about, oh, this company is shredding these things in like a massive wood chipper type device and turning them into playground surfaces or tennis courts or something. Are we not, do we not have enough playgrounds to, to, to do this I, with? I don't know. Because it, 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 you do see those stories once in a while. It would, yeah, well, it would. <laughs> see, here's the whole thing you would have to be interested in it. I, I uh, Now, I don't know why they're not interested in it, but it will. Put it up on our where YouTube page, Max Zapata. But it is just a, it's is, it literally it's third looks world. like looks. It's third world. It's third world. What what we're in L.A. It's 2022. Can we get our shit together? It I, looks like hurricane aftermath. Yes, I would. Or tornado or whatever. If I was, I don't know. Our, our our mayor's going off to India, but if there is a campaign, I would just run on. This place is a trash heap, and uh, I'm going to clean it up. And, you know, uh, schools and Medicare, and uh, that's all fine. But, like, first thing I'm going to do is just fucking clean everything up. We, you shouldn't be living in this. And you want to talk about a sort of environmental depression that, that takes place? This is it. When you yeah, live in a absolutely. city where there's garbage everywhere and graffiti, everywhere you can't see garbage, there's graffiti, and you have to drive through it every day. I, it takes its toll. 
it's a quality of life issue. And if you think of it on a micro instead of a macro, if you were the mayor, I could see running on saying like, the show hoarders, like these these people's houses are filthy. They're filled to the brim with trash. They're, they have mental illness. So where do we start? We probably start with, let's just clean up your house and then we can do that. And then we'll start addressing everything out from there. Right. All right. So it's a shit heap. You know, the, <laughs> I don't the, get the, it. The ubiquitous um, uh, people in LA who you, you see pushing the carts, where you're collecting, uh, going through the the blue bins and collecting cans and bottles and mm -hmm. turning them in for whatever they turn them in for. Whether they, they're clearing, I don't know, twenty dollars a day, thirty. I don't know what it is, but let's just throw it up. Well, whatever, hypothetically. Yeah. How about the city is like, hey, you guy, thirty five dollars a day. Clean this up. You know, that, 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 yeah. that, that, that makes sense for them financially. It makes sense for the city. It makes sense financially for the city. Well, you're going to have to put a fence up. You're going to have to have a patrol. You're going to have to do something. But the point is, is could we do something? All right. Uh, let's see. India's overflowing with trash. Oh, good. Well, it's just in. <laughs> God, Scarsetti will go over there and make it worse. Um, I was, um, uh, I don't know. I wrote down a rich man, poor man, Let's hear oh. uh, rich man, poor man, Mark Garagos can't go into detail about your case. <laughs> That's my, I like that. I like that. He does. He does the, the poorest the of the Browns poor of the and the world. richest yeah. of the rich, but he can't go into it. Yeah. That's I can't comment on that. It's not like a middle that. class Mark Garrick, no. you're not in the middle class no. if Mark Garrick no. goes, I can't really get into any deep nuts and bolts of that case. <laughs> wow. It's a rich man, poor man. It's very specific. Um, I sent Chris this email. Chris, I don't know if you saw it about an hour ago. I don't, it, it's old. It was going around the internet, but I wanted to know if you guys have seen this 30 second clip of Bob Saget on Norm McDonald's old show. I don't think so. It's literally. No. It's 30 seconds. Andy and I have been replaying it all morning, laughing our asses off. I mean, I, I didn't really know the extent of their friendship, and I don't know if, if Chris can pull it up, but it is, it. It, it is so mean and so funny. We've just been watching it all morning. I wanted to see if you guys had seen this. I've never seen it. Dean Martin at Hamburger Hamlet. You know everything about That's what I meant. That's where I saw him. Was it, did, was it Hamburger Hamlet? Yeah, I didn't That's know. That's where I saw him also. Did, we must have talked about it, too. I don't know. Well, he'd always be at Hamburger And I walked in there, and he had lost his son, and he was my, uh, he was one of the guys yeah. that just did it like, that yeah. was the guy I looked at. Oh, yeah, he's a great and, and, and he was sitting there, and he was having a martini, and I just walked over, and I was 22, yeah, yeah. 23. And I just kind of stood there. I didn't want to bother him because yeah. I, uh, or maybe I was 24, <laughs> and he was just sitting there. And he and he looked up, and it was he was nice. And yeah. I just went. I found your son. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Bob Sag has been our guest. <laughs> We've just been replaying that all morning. Dean. Uh... Dean Martin's son died in a training exercise. Oh God! In an aircraft. Military? Yeah, no. yeah. I don't know if he was Air Force or if he was like a Naval Reserve or flight, whatever. He was a flight school guy or something, mm -hmm. and his plane crashed out in the out in the desert. God. And, well, to uh, put an even finer point on it, Norm Macdonald, everybody. God, both of them. No, yeah. oh, I forgot about that. I was so yeah. I was so Bob Sagatized. That's right. That I forgot Norm's gone too. And the, what a two months apart. I mean, yeah, Norm yeah. Just, three. Way I mean, no, short or period four, of time. whatever. Yeah, yeah, Norm just died too. Yeah. Um. All right. Somewhat. Something to look for, <clears throat> Chris. That I hadn't talked to you about. Um. Was um. When I was talking to Scott Bay, and we we're talking about. Uh, Bugsy Malone, that crazy movie. children's movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a you know eighty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It was a good. <laughs> it was a good movie. It had Jodie Foster in it. Um, he was talking about the real breakthrough kid in that movie. It was all kids. It wasn't Jodie Foster mm -hmm. or Scott Baio. It was Fat Lou or Fat Al or his sidekick. The the com the comedy. There was a fat kid who was. The comedy of the of the movie, and 
he said like that kid was supposed to be Sark because he was so good in this. And I remember seeing it in the theater when I was 10 years old and I was like, yeah, that kid cracked me up. And uh, Scott saying, yeah, he was supposed to be the kid. And I, I didn't follow it up, but I don't know whatever happened to that kid. He was, he had, you know, when he was 12, he had crazy comedic chops. He was this really funny little kid. And I don't know that he went on, I, you know, you never know. People go on and they produce or, oh, that guy, that guy came up with the idea for uh, Survivor or, you know, American Ninja Warrior yeah, yeah. or something. You never know where these people go, but I don't. Or ends up being, oh, it's that guy They're from the thing. Or... Right. I don't know what that guy's IMDb is, Max Zapata, but is I'm it, curious. Okay, so he played Fat Sam. Fat that was, Sam. That was his name in Bugsy Malone. Uh, what's, see. what's the actor's J- name? His name's John Cassisi. Discovered uh, by Alan Parker for Bugsy Malone. Retired in, from acting in 82. Oh, he barely and even be- had yeah, a Yeah, became death. involved in construction work. Wow. Well, maybe wow. he became a real mobster. <laughs> in the cement industry or the disposal industry? Cement shoes. Well, in 2015, he pleaded guilty to a bribery scheme and was sentenced to two to six years in prison plus oh $500,000. Oh. Uh, Cassisi is married and has had three children. His eldest son, Robert, died after suffering from a pulmonary embolism at the age of 26. Oh, shit. And that, Jesus. Yeah, only been in one movie. That was his only credit? Yeah. Well, you- no, the, apparently he was also in a TV series called Fish. Oh, oh fish. Fish. Abe Vigoda. Is you serious? Really? Yeah, that was, oh, I was fish. fucking around. <laughs> fish, that was... Yeah, uh, Abe Vigoda. Uh, there was, as New York City Police Department uh, detective Phil Fish. I think they spun him off from Barney Miller. No shit. I think Fish is a spinoff from Barney Miller, and I he played uh, Fish's kid, or one of the oh. kids. Yeah, has a vague memory. I don't know. Find a clip from... Uh, <laughs> see, even find a clip from Bugsy Malone. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, recognize that kid. It's interesting. So you got you got that kid. He's the breakout of the movie. Then you got Scott Bayo, and then you got Jodie Foster. Yeah. And then Scott Bayo goes right to Happy Days, and Jodie Foster goes off to you know stardom, movie stardom. And then you got the breakout kid goes back to New Jersey, does construction. Does nothing. Mm-hmm. By the way. Well, I mean, the, nothing the, in the, the entertainment industry. The, between the construction and the bribery charge, <laughs> there may be an, uh, yeah. there may be some mob uh, influence there. Art right? imitating life, life imitating art. Yes. All right. We'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can find that. There's also Any a the kids in that cast who were notable. Um, I mean, I'm asking you the before the, the movie. I mean, before. No, who went, went on to become, start went him. on to become a notable a name we would know or a face. Again, I'm asking you off the top of your head. That's not fair. Well, we got we got Scott and we got Jody. That's pretty good That's pretty for good. a kids cast movie from oh, yeah. from back in the day when everyone starts off as a as a nobody. And uh it's a good little movie. I don't know. Watch it with your kids. It's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. I don't know where it is. Uh you got the family guy clip that uh, Chris was telling me was making the rounds. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why either. It just these things just pop up every once in a while. Just like remember this or this one is uh, is this the darkest Family Guy joke that they and everyone's just surprised it actually aired on Fox. <laughs> yeah. up. Snowy road. Oh damn it, dude! <laughs> bad news. You're dead. What? But I'm death. Sorry, dude. Super death. You're done. So what now? I go to heaven? Nope. When a deaf dies, he gets reincarnated. You're being reincarnated as a Chinese baby right now. Girl? Girl. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a strong joke. I mean, it's a strong joke. Yeah, it's strong joke. Oh, God. He disappeared and came right back for those not watching. They had another joke that just jarred my brain. I don't think it had anything to do with me. Oh, Norm Macdonald was deaf. Indeed. Um, I don't think I'm tr- I, the reason I replaced Norm Macdonald was I don't think it was for any contractual anything or deal dealing with material or anything. Norm he had a difficult time showing up places, mm. and uh, they used to uh, you know Family Guy started Gina right in your neighborhood. What? Oh yeah, right across. From the market you don't go into, Gelson's. 
<laughs> oh, in the building across the street. There's like a commercial building. Yeah, it's, it's down. It's it's, it's a notch toward the freeway. Yep, but I it's know like exactly. this six-story commercial yep. building, right on Laurel Canyon in North Hollywood or what, Valley which, Village. Which direction? Uh, <laughs> oh, and shit. and uh, it's west. It is. It is right there. And uh, that's where I used to go to do uh, do the Family Guy. Probably oh for they were probably there for. Oh, I don't know. I think they they went on the air and then they got canceled or something, and then they came back or right. some yeah, some yeah. version of that. But I used to go there and do voiceover, and then they got canceled. And then when they came back, they came back on uh, Miracle Mile on the other side of the hill. Located uh, close to the uh, morning show. Yes, yes. You used, used to, to walk next door, like a block away. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally could just finish the morning show and go next door. And uh, next door was another building. This right. took about two and a half minutes. We'd have to wait for Seth to show up. And Seth, not an early riser. <laughs> I all. respect that. Well, it's the reason he's alive, as I've said uh, That's right. many times. That's true. He missed his flight out of Logan, and it was the flight that went to the tower. That's crazy. Yeah. And but he isn't it literally nice was because... rushing to make the it's... flight. That's insane. And we talk to so many people, and you do, especially on Take a Knee, where it's like, oh, I only sleep for two hours a night. And by, four, you know, like Garagos, whatever, I'm up at four. And I'm, I, I like a, a nice, really ultra successful guy that eh, can't be bothered before 10. Well, you wonder if um, I never thought about this, but um, every comedian and every creative type just about stays up late and sleeps in that's mm -hmm. their world that's their schedule uh and that's how it goes they're, they're none of them are morning people and so then you go well why not or who is a morning person who i hate morning people but i only hate them because i'm jealous mm -hmm. so let's right let's let's be clear it's envy but um well the comedians are, are sitting thinking about stuff all the time. So that then keeps you up. Mm -hmm. you, you don't go to bed at nine o'clock when your brain is kind of putting mm -hmm. things together all the time. And then because you stayed up late, because you're putting things together, your brain is all sort of fried out and then you end up sleeping in. So it makes sense that the creatives sort of stay up late. And, yeah. and, and, and actually then it's like, what, what came first? Because there's a lot of comedians I know where the comedy didn't come first. The schedule came first. Like uh -huh. you want to have a career where you go out, you never have to leave your house before eight 30 in the evening. Mm -hmm. And then you go out and do 20 minutes and then you get paid and then you can watch a matinee or oh. go to brunch or hang out mm -hmm. the next day. And if you don't believe me, think about the comedians, you know, think about, Jeff Ross or Sarah Silverman or something like that. You got a bunch of people in their fifties. They don't have kids. Yeah. Right. It, it's not that they don't like kids. They love the schedule the they have. Yeah, the, that, the kids that's a cramp, life. Kids cramp a lifestyle. Oh God. Staying up late. Get up early. And how. Yeah. All right. Oh, we have a John Cassisi clip. F Fat Sam. Yeah. It'd have to be Ooh. that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or fish. Yeah. Or fish. You might recognize this guy, oh, or at least Makes me edgy. Let's pause. Pour me a double on the rocks. Sure, boss. What's so funny, Buster? You find me amusing? No, boss. I'm sorry. I wasn't smelling at you. Honest, I was. Find my suit funny or something? No, boss. Well, it was Joe your flower. Joe Pesci. Yep. Oh, yeah, it is kind of droopy, ain't it? Yeah, a little boss. <laughs> In fact, it's very droopy. <laughs> very droopy, boss. <laughs> Hold it a minute, will you? You need some water. <laughs> Don't ever let me see you laughing at me again, you hear? I'll so ram that smile right down your throat. I'm Fat Sam. Don't ever forget that. Number one man, top dog, Mr. Big. Always have been, always will be. Now get out of here. Oh, he he's good. so sorry, so numero uno. Oh, no. Proud be, be careful, boss. The floor is wet. Fat Sam. That's some good. good. That's some good vaudevillian 
humor. Yeah. You know, he's good at that. He did that the whole movie. He he's was good. like the breakout That's comedy great. guy the whole movie. Like Jodie Foster and Scott Baer were like the straight men to Fat Sam. But wow. he never uh, never really parlayed it into anything. Wow. Except for fish. Except for fish. Well, they go to... Which I haven't thought about in a million years, but it was a it was a primetime sitcom. We should talk to wow. that guy. I find him interesting. Why 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 not is he, pursue? Is he in? Is can you in, can you zoom in with an ankle bracelet? Yeah. I'm just asking. That's the only way to do it, man. I don't know. You can't leave your house. <laughs> I'm asking. I don't know. I would think that'd be the only way. I don't know what the rules are. I'm just asking. Well, we can ask him. Well, maybe it's an electronic thing. Yeah. Maybe well, it interferes uh, the, the with the that he's going across the country via Zoom. No, maybe the the the, the beacon that's on your interferes. ankle interferes with the oh, Zoom technology. Gosh. I'm asking. I don't know. We should ask Sam. Be interesting to talk to that guy, because he was the he was the guy who was riding the crest when that movie after that movie came out. All right, let's see. We got the Rotten Tomatoes game to play. We got uh, Maurice Bernard, who's uh, been on General Hospital for like what did we figure out, Chris? Twenty seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. You want to talk? I Think mean, you better. There's uh, I think more than that, even. Yeah. With a stint on all my children. There is a no more in acting in the world of entertainment. There's only one real consistent job, and that is the soap opera. Soap opera. Yeah. yeah, there's no. You can't even. You can't even get killed off. Yeah, you come, You'll come back. back as your own yeah. twin. Yeah. Speaking of that, Chris, wasn't there some? Did somebody just get fired? There was a. There was a. A, a guy who wouldn't get yes. faxed to quit. Yes. A few weeks back, a soap star, and then another guy just got canned for like coming back too soon. We'll try to figure that one out. I, I actually think that is General Hospital, where Maurice is from. Oh, okay. Did you see that, Chris? All yes. right, we'll find Steve, it. It was Steve Burton. Uh, he left General Hospital after nearly three decades because of the COVID COVID nineteen vaccine. COVID. No, there was another story where the guy came back too soon oh all right anyway look that one up we'll take a quick break come back to rotten tomatoes right after this all right well given that today is martin luther king jr day the rotten tomatoes game is prepared to go totally woke white people are the worst am i right <laughs> yeah. yeah this week's theme is movies about racial inequality and the civil rights movement First up, we have this Spike Lee-directed biopic about controversial black activist Malcolm X. The film pays tribute to the man who fought for black liberation and later became a leader in the Nation of Islam. Spoiler alert, he was assassinated in 1965. Denzel Washington, Angela Bassett, and Delroy Lindo star in 1992's Malcolm X. Well, they had to like this one. Shame to admit I have not seen this. What? I know. Shocking. Did you see it, Gina? Oh, yes. Did you like it? I mean, it? I thought yeah. Yeah, I mean it was it was huge. Remember this is the trailer that uh, they'd play every 90 seconds in a commercial. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. It That's was like right. a, it was a very heated and uh, some would say motivating movie to find out more about his life. You from 1992. Mm -hmm. So there was 780% less race talk in 1992 than True. 2022. True. We have upped the fucking volume yeah. on race. It's crazy. It's, just, it's the craziest cultural thing ever. All right. Um, well, let's see. The critics had to like it. Um, Spike does some good work. I think this Denzel. is Denzel. I think it might have been nominated for an Oscar. Had to be nominations here. A little before the woke bump, but who's going to, what critic's going to take a stand against Malcolm X? <laughs> so, with that in mind, I say 88. Ooh. 81. 89. We have a five point deduction, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Malcolm X is certified fresh at 89%. Oh! My second wow. time. Why, right out of the gate. Yeah, look at that. 
Our next film takes place in 1960s Mississippi and tells the story of a young college girl who pursues her dreams of becoming a writer by interviewing the black women who have spent their lives taking care of prominent white families. No! The small Brian and I hate this movie. southern Ooh. town is turned upside down as more and more women come forward with plenty to say. The all-star class cast includes Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, Emma Stone, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Jessica Chastain from 2011, The Help. Hate this movie. Why? No, I didn't see, but why? Um, it is uh, kind of the, the ultimate example of millions uh, of how a novel, a beloved novel, gets turned into a very melodramatic movie. Mm -hmm. Very melodramatic. <clears throat> it is so patronizing. Oh. It's it it's hard to watch. Change begins with a whisper. Uh -huh. oh. And I don't begrudge, and I don't think Brian does either, that the story, or like you said, the book that it comes from is, you know, the, the premise is great, but it's just so patronizing, and it's so saccharine sweetened over. It's it's a tough one. Yeah, it's a beloved book. I, you know, Christy read it, said she cried at the end, but the movie was um, broad. What? How did Christy yeah. feel about it? The movie? Yeah. Uh, you know, probably liked it a little bit, three stars, you know, above average. Because sometimes when people read a book and then they get pissed at the movie, mm -hmm. other times they feel oh. invested. You know what I mean? Her bar, her bar is low. <laughs> For movie, she's, she's, of, she doesn't see a lot of movies. <laughs> well, she married she you. A lot of dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, one would inquire whether she actually possesses I a really, bar. I really, I uh, really walked into that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Billy Crystal hilariously you... opened the Oscars with a, a pie shit eating joke. Oh yeah. Remember that? His. Oh, was that from this movie? Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, the, the shit pie became kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Octavia Billy. Spencer shits in a pie and gives it to Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, and Billy, Billy and Crystal. And Sissy Spacek. Oh, oh, yeah, he puts himself, he mm -hmm. used to, back when he hosted, puts himself in the scenes, and he's gobbling. Oh, this pie's delicious. Who, who could see that coming? <laughs> I still, I you know, call me old-fashioned, but uh, as far as the Oscars go, Somebody riding out on a horse and doing a little soft shoe and taking uh, taking some footage and splicing. I, I miss those days. God, oh, do, do you? I miss those days. Do you? Yes. Good. Then I can't wait to give you some news. Oh, in really? News segment. Right. Yes, indeed. Oh, I think I may know what it is. <laughs> hmm. You know, I, know. I got like, too pre upset. Yeah, they do a song, they do a little stand up. Yeah, I miss, yeah, the oh. old. Uh, the palm from circumstance, for lack of a better term. You know who took the baton and ran with it beautifully was Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. I mean, big show-stopping numbers. I missed that, too. Yeah, it's it's funny. This, the halftime of the Super Bowl keeps getting bigger, and the Oscars keep getting smaller. Like, mm -hmm. could you imagine halftime of the Super Bowl? Like, we're going actless this year. Yeah. We're not having an act. <laughs> We're just, or two of the players are going to come out. And they're gonna, hey, they're how gonna, you doing? A couple are going to come out. Super Bowl shuffle. They're going to they're going to take a knee. They're going to discuss the situation that's going on in our society. Like, just apply it to the Super Bowl because if you really think about it, as a nation, the opening, you know, the they're probably about the same length. The, the opening, that's an interesting thing to find out, Max Zapata, but the, the opening of the Oscars is, you know, 11 minutes or whatever it is. It can range between 10 and 13 minutes or something like that. The Super Bowl act is about the same thing. Those are like two of the things we kind of looked forward to or talked okay. about or, you know, either we everyone had an opinion. It was thumbs up or thumbs down, but it was something. You, you know We're what invested. I mean? Yes. And one of them, the Super Bowl, just gets bigger. It's an interesting, um, it's a psychological probe because football is fucking football. It's a bunch of rich, old, white owners who are like, you put a fucking show on for those people out there. Like everything is about competition and about mm -hmm. putting a show on and mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. And then Hollywood is a bunch of fucking hand ringers that are all fucking woke. And the Super Bowl gets bigger every year and the Oscars get smaller every year. All right. Um, the help. Yes. The help. All right. Boy, well, I, I haven't even written down, but an don't you yet. feel like this was nominated, right? Uh, I'd be shocked if it Actually, wasn't. You know, I'll bet like Octavia Spencer got like a supporting actress nomination or Jessica Chastain or someone like that. All right. 
Uh, this is 2011. It, it was nominated. Yeah, Brian knew that. He's <laughs> playing it close to the vest. You know uh, me. All right. I I say as much as you guys hated this, this was in the woke era. Mm. And and it's going to get the woke bump. And I'm going 83%. Ooh. A little lower at 71. I also went 83. Oh. The help is certified fresh. Dang. At 76%. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Right in between. Next up, we have the story of a black father who avenges his daughter's brutal rape by killing the bigoted men responsible for the crime. The father Ooh. then hires an inexperienced lawyer, played by Matthew McConaughey, to defend him in the hopes of being acquitted in his small, segregated southern town based on a novel by John Grisham and co-starring Samuel L. Jackson. Sandra Bullock... And Kevin Spacey from 1996, A Time to Kill. Oh, by the way, the story I was thinking of was uh, Richard Berge from uh, The Young and the Restless, or Young and the Restless. I don't know. There's a the at the front of that one. Oh, there is. There, it is the. Oh, okay. Um, I still don't know if it's sex in the city or sex <laughs> and the city. And but uh, the young and the restless. It wasn't on the 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 wasn't on my screen. That's why I said that. Uh, he the came young in the restless. In the restless, he came back to set after five days, which was the CDC protocol as of late, but not the ten days that was the protocol of Hollywood. So he then got fired. Fired. I I that's what it that's what happened. I'm sure he'll sue for wrongful termination but okay everyone this is the world we're living in awesome all right so the idiots that on um, the young and the restless say 10 days uh fauci uh says five days and so you come back after five days and then you get fired all right Oof, uh, awesome awesome tough, place to live break. everybody yep here we are all right uh pfft, you guys i didn't see, see this, this. no i, I, I saw it I did too. This was another famous line that was on heavy rotation on the commercials of Samuel L. Jackson uh, on the stand and going, "Yes, I did it, and I hope they burn in hell." Yes, you deserve to die. Yeah, no, that's burn in hell. Yeah, there you go. What uh, what year was this? Ninety six. Ninety six. I saw this mm. in the theater. All Me right, too. let's see. Made Matthew McConaughey a star. I don't know that he was. I think was he only was he even in uh, the, the high school movie at that point. You said this is 96? Yeah, Yeah, Days and Fuse came before that. But not much. All right. Um, I have no clue. Days and Confused is 93. There you go. I, hmm. Now, this is early, so it doesn't really get the woke bump. On the other hand, I didn't. And it doesn't get Matthew McConaughey, you know, I didn't, cool points because it was yeah, way before that. I don't know if it was good or bad. He wasn't even top. He's the star. He wasn't even top billed. Yeah. All right. You guys in? I I don't know. (laughs) Okay, I got one. Hold on. Okay. All right, now it may may be revealed that I'm an idiot, but these kind of movies just get out of the gate at 50%. Like, just the theme gets them out of the gate. And it's the same, it's the opposite beef that I have with comedies. You know, when people are like really hard on comedies, some of our favorite comedies are 52% or something like right. that. It's and, and for, but, but the other side of that coin is movies with the right theme and the right tone will just be perpetual 65ers without even really have to do any heavy lifting. Just make sure the theme and the tone is right. And I say 77%. That's funny you mentioned tone, because I haven't thought about this movie since 1996 when I saw it. And if, if I recall, it's a weird tone. Like, sometimes it's very heroic, and other times it's very swampy and sultry and sexy and didn't work. Uh, but it's okay, 68. I, I hardly remember it. I said 63. We have another five-point deduction. Oh, my God. A Time to Kill is fresh. Come on, I need this. <gasps> At 68. Woo! Oh, damn it. Needed that. That was a big pop. Uh, the game was very close, but that was a that was a nice pop. Feeling good. Well, back in 1839, a slave ship set sail from Cuba to America. Mm-hmm. And during that long trip, 
an unprecedented slave uprising took place. Once in America, the slaves were imprisoned until a freed slave takes a cue from the Time to Kill playbook and recruits an inexperienced lawyer played by Matthew McConaughey Ow. to help exonerate them of their crimes, directed by Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Co-starring Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Jaiman Hansu, and Anthony Hopkins as John Quincy Adams from 1997, Amistad. Very ashamed to Wait. admit I have not seen this. Yeah, sorry, I haven't either. Were you joking? Is Matthew McConaughey really in, in this? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you guys do not support the black community. No, That's what I've learned from this game. We either haven't seen it or we hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Too Honest many black dad. faces. Secret racists over here. Thumbs That's down. That's a secret. All right. Well, who? You want to talk about all the components of a fresh movie. This is it. Oh, indeed. I think I did see it. This would have been... Probably in the era of my grandmother getting VHS tapes from the Academy and me borrowing them, but mm -hmm. uh, having to leave a deposit. <laughs> sure. <the> Collateral. <laughs> so I, sh I wish I'd videotape those negotiations. Like, I'm going to take Amistad. Uh, Jules Mandel said he wanted Amistad. Well, when where's no. where's Jules Mandel? Well, he him and Trudy are coming on Monday. Oh, well, it's Friday. I'll just watch it over the weekend and bring it. Well, Jules, I promised Jules he could have it on Monday. Yeah, well, I'll bring it back on Saturday after I watch it. Are you sure? Because sometimes you forget things, honey. Uh, no, I'll I'll bring it. Could you leave um, a deposit, like your wallet? It was a lot of negotiating trying to get those things out the out the door. But also... Once people caught on, but you know, I, I used to call my grandmother once a month. It, 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 it got up to three times a week, depending <laughs> on what batch of movies, you know, because a random once you got into Oscar season, four oh, movies would sure show up, you know, yep. but they, you didn't know they would show up on a Tuesday or a week after or a week before. So then there'd be the frequency of which I called grandma went up a lot. And uh, it'd be like a lot of, oh, hi, Grant. No, just checking in. Yeah. Just checking in. I see what you're doing since 10 a.m. today. <laughs> just thinking about you. Mail guy been by or just checking. Just checking in. All right. Well, Honest, look how evil Anthony Hopkins looks on that poster. There's not a lot of difference in skin tone of those four actors. It is kind of weird that uh, for the way the poster lays out, it looks like he's he looks like... Samuel L. Jackson from um, uh, Django. Django, yep. right? Yeah, with big chops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Right. Why does Matthew McConaughey look like uh, Vicky Lawrence from Mama's Family? <laughs> he does. All right. Wow. I gotta go big at ninety-three. A little lower, Ooh. eighty-seven. Eighty-one. Jesus, Jenny, you really hate these movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost odd. It's certified fresh. Oh, shit. But 77. Oh, oh, sweet. Damn it. I'm right out of this, man. <laughs> and finally, we started with a biopic, and we'll end with another one. This last film stars the late, great Chadwick Boseman as Jackie Robinson. Fuck this movie. <laughs> the man who broke the notorious color barrier to join the Brooklyn Dodgers and courageously faced an onslaught of racism from the public, press, and other players. Harrison Ford co-stars as legendary manager Branch Rickey from 2013, 42. Alan Tudyk co-stars as a comic, comically racist manager. Hey, Edward. Hey, he was yelling at him on the field. He's right. on the field just screaming at the N-word. Oh. Hey, Chris, I want to add to my list of things to do before I die. No, 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 no. I want to be cast in a period movie where... Somebody's being horribly racist to another culture, and I'm the one mm. who, steps, who in. steps in and stands okay. up. That's what I want to do. Brad Pitt, 12 Years a Slave. You're, mm -hmm. you're, the, you're the voice of reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Liam Neeson in Schindler's List. Yes. Now you're talking. He's, <laughs> now, he died a bit after this, so we didn't know. This Ooh. didn't get a, a Chadwick. Right. Oh, Chad. Oh, I did a Baldy one on this a long time ago. And he died last year? 
What I remember it was uh, the Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was his last movie. Right. Got nominated so for no the Oscar crossover. a year and a half yeah. ago. But we didn't get any, he didn't get any no. bump no. from the critics. Like, oh, come on, the guy's dead. You got to. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Yes, yeah. I misunderstood. Yes. Yeah. Correct. All right. And it he was, was in his prime. It was not. Now, 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 now we have to take a, a baddish movie, but a great theme. And mm -hmm. try to figure out where the critic, you know, what happened. Like maybe if this is just a shit movie, you go twenty two percent. I don't normally do this, but I'll give, I'll, I'll tell you guys one hundred percent honest. Uh, I mo people prob most people probably like this more than me. I probably liked it a lot less than most people. Well, to pile on, one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life was a Chadwick Boseman, Boseman movie, Get On Up, when he played mm -hmm. James, oh, James Brown. Brown. Yeah, so I don't know uh, if there's a connection here or not, but. Now, Brian had high praise for John Goodman as the babe. Yeah, yeah, no. Because he, he's uh, a white guy. Perfect. He encaps <laughs> encapsulated mm -hmm. Babe Ruth. All right. <laughs> the babe. Okay. Hold Let's on. Let's see. Oh, man. This is tough because I genuinely hate this movie, but it could, it could very well be fresh or piss me off. All right. And, and, but, but like you said, the subject matter, there's not a human being in this country that doesn't want us hear the Jackie Robinson story. We love Jackie Robinson. Right. Hold on. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going unusually high at 79. Yeah. I went Ooh. just on the right side of fresh at 61. 74. 42 is certified fresh. No. At 81%. Oh, that really hurt. Oh, that... I didn't need those 20 points. Wow. Interesting. Now it's interesting. Oh, close game. Oh, boy. We've got a very tight game, ladies and boy, gentlemen. Boy, we do. First of all, I want to congratulate Gina Grad uh -huh. on making the podium. Well done. Thank you. Adam Carolla, your score with the five point deduction Wait. on other people's hands. Oh, yeah, on other people's hands, right? Still put you firmly in a place better than bald Brian. <gasps> Adam Carolla, 35. That's a good score. Ooh, good. Bald Brian, 38. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Your hatred of all things black I know. finally came really, back really to bite you. On this one. Yeah. Came home to roost. Like a black but did the mamba. ace man win? He could have. But he didn't. Oh. <laughs> because Gina Grad with her score of 18. Wow. Takes the top spot. In the wow. Rotten Tomatoes game. Fine Tomatoes score. Game. Thank you. You know how we do. I think, you know, it's like when you watch a game show from the comfort of your own couch. I feel like maybe the pressure was a little off just sitting here writing on my little piece of paper, sitting in my office. A lot of stuff we can't see over there. Yeah, my uh, muscles will throw a woman. My hands are always up. My musk throws a woman off her game, you know what I mean? My <laughs> musk. Exactly when, you, right. when, when, when you imbibe my musk, yeah, I get take all the woozy best and, and the dizzy. brightest and knock them down to a schoolgirl. That's right. That's what, that's what you're that's missing. You're missing my musk. <laughs> It scrambles a woman's mind. It's it, true. I didn't realize it until warms now. their loins and scrambles oh, their my mind. mind. It's my moss. This would be a perfect time for me to come in since I can't fucking smell or taste anything. Yes, oh is. yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be a slave to my moss. Impervious, That's like right. you normally are. <laughs> That's right. Wow, eighteen. <laughs> well, so that movie was an eighty-one, according to critics, and. That would be an example of theme. Yeah, adding right a, time, a, right a place. A big old bump. Yeah. That that could have been a twenty point or percentage point bump on a movie that could have been a sixty type movie. All right, uh, we will take ourselves a break. Maurice Bernard, who's uh, an interesting guy, He's been won Emmys, been on soap for a million years, been married for thirty five years. By the way, he's only fifty eight. That's a lot. A long time. And uh, has a very interesting thoughts on uh, the mind, and the, the mental, and what's going on mm -hmm. out here. So we'll talk to uh, Maurice right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, I know you're no fan of uh, Thor's home world of Asgard. But there's another show you probably never watched called The Witcher, where there's a kingdom called Nilfgaard. 
So I feel like you could get far behind guarding some milfs more than guarding that ass. Peace. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Maurice Bernard has joined us in studio. He has a uh, show, MB State of Mind, and it premieres uh, this spring on industry, industry media. Dot com, and we'll talk about the theme of that. Also, a uh, New York Times bestselling uh, author. Nothing general about it. That book is uh, out as we speak. And then, of course, General Hospital for 27 years, 28, 28 years. years. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, uh, does it feel like show business at a certain point, or does it feel like a job at a certain point? Yeah, I was just talking to my buddy out there. You know, after 28 years... Uh, of getting, I, I, it seems like beat up. I mean, the job's the greatest job in the world, but as a, you know, I'm a method actor, so um, who's bipolar? So is the character, Sonny, bipolar. After 28 years, like, um, there's a lot of days where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. What, what is the schedule? Well, the schedule's great. It's not that, it's just the, where I got to dig to, a lot, and it's been so long for 28 years that I just, uh, it, it's like a boxer. I know you box and I box. When you get hit for that long, after a while, you're like. Well, <laughs> pardon me, but you shouldn't have made the character bipolar. <laughs> you should have made him a, an optimist. Who loved, Let me go lucky. He loved dance. Because <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then you could go there every day for, know, for, the, for the waking hours and then uh, go back to your bipolar. How do you deal with your bipolar? I, well, you know, uh, I haven't had a breakdown in 30 years. Well, that's good. Um, I've stayed on my medication. Every time I've gone off my lithium, I've had a, a nervous break. So I've had three nervous breakdowns, three manic episodes. Um, so I'm cool with that. What, what kills me, and I want to talk to you about it, is the anxiety that scares the hell out of me. Mm. And during the pandemic, when my book came out, I had the worst anxiety I've ever had, literally for four months straight, not sleeping, shaking, and I had to promote the book. And I want you to tell Dr. Drew that I'm sorry because when I did his show, literally all I wanted to say to him was, uh, can you save my life? Wow. Well, Drew's had... I know he has. ...had some panic attacks. I had an anxiety attack for the first time ever, like, I don't know, like five years ago. And uh, for the first time ever, I felt what everyone was talking yes. about. You're talking yeah. about this? Oh, maybe a little. Mine was kind of, mine was sort of self-induced. I took a, uh, I was preparing to do a big live TV show. So I sort of had that launch of this big live TV show right. thing on my mind. And then I flew a red eye from Ooh. L.A. to Florida, and I just drank on the plane the entire time. <laughs> I, I didn't even sleep. I can't sleep on a plane. I just sit there, and I was just drinking on the plane. And then I got to the hotel room in Florida at like 7.30 in the morning. I hadn't slept. I'd been had a lot of stuff on my mind. I went to go lay down in bed, and I had an anxiety attack. Like, I could feel it, and I was like, Oh, this is what everyone's talking about. This mm -hmm. crippling horribleness that was, it was brutal. Now for me, it was like kind of self-induced. So once I was able to go to bed, I just sort of woke up at noon and I was basically yeah. fine. But I thought, Oh, when I used to tell Dr. Drew to get his shit together, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> yeah, he was having right. a panic attack. <laughs> now I feel what he was feeling and how impossible that would be. Yes. If he was, if I was in, or if, if I was in that state, and I was, you know, I there was a uh, there was a point where I didn't fly for ten years because I got off two planes, um, and that was the first time I had an anxiety attack on the first plane I got off, and I thought I was having a, another break. Then I'm like, oh no, and I was drinking. Yeah, doesn't and help. I wanted to take my clothes off and jump out of the plane, and I was scared. I was paranoid, and then it happened again. So uh, I don't fly much. What do you do in the sort of holistic department? Do you meditate? Do you take saunas? Do you cold plunge? Hikes? You know, here's the thing. Like I said, last pan during the pandemic, 
um, I did everything, meditated, I worked out, uh, whatever I could do to get rid of this uh, horrific feeling. Nothing, when you're at that point, you're, nothing helps. But now I'm meditating, like I meditated this morning, because I had to do the Adam Carolla show. Hmm. <laughs> I should have meditated. I had to. And I was crying, and it's great. But the, the best thing for anything, anxiety, is to prevent it from happening. Because mm -hmm. once it clicks over, yeah, like I said, I was on, on Dr. Drew, and I know he was going something, because I was just out, man. I was out. Well, I, I, there's the bigger question. What you're feeling versus what you're projecting may be two very different things. I mean, they're... You're, I bet if you watched a film of you with Dr. Drew, you would not feel that your performance matched what the chaos yes. that was in your head. Adam, you're absolutely right. Now, I did see it. Oh, you did? I didn't love it, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. Because Every, I'm, I'm a good actor. I can fake it. <laughs> Everything is that way. <laughs> when you, when you, if you watch, if you ever do, um, I'm sure you have, if you ever do uh, a late night talk, show and you're on Leno or Letterman or Kimmel or whatever it is. And you, in the moment, you know, you're trying to tell a joke or a story or something like that. And in the moment you have a little brain fart where you go, Oh, um, Oh, what was that guy's name or whatever. And when you get off stage, you think it was a big <laughs> moment. Right. Like, Oh, oh I disaster. threw the pooch on that one. If you think it was 10 Mississippi of dead air, and then mm -hmm. you go back and watch yeah. it that night. It was it was brief. Mm -hmm. It was a second of you going, that yeah. guy, oh, yeah. yeah. And then poop. But it feels, and I don't know why we need to go that direction. Why not just see it for, why does it feel like yeah. so much worse than what it actually, what everyone else saw? But, you know, you know, it's funny because uh, during that period also I did, uh, uh, during Mother's Day, a ton of cameos. And mm. I literally... I didn't want to live anymore. That's how bad it was. But I would do the the cameos. Oh, you got to be popular on cameo, on cameo because no, it's a big for Mother's deal. Day. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. gonna tell you another story about you on cameo. But I, my wife said, I'll tell cameo that you can't. I said, No, I'm doing it. And it was like I don't want to say how many it was because I'm like bragging. But I was like, Hi, am I? And I watched the cameo just this last week. Some of them were on my phone. And they were horrible, but the fans are so great, they don't say anything. Now, as far as your cameo, I got some cam I got cameos for my my kids for Christmas. <laughs> and I got Adam for one of my daughters. <laughs> okay. And and this is why cameo is so popular because everybody loved their cameos. So here comes Adam. And I thought Adam was gonna be like this funny. Ah, he was the, it was the sweetest, nicest, respectful cameo, I got to tell you. That was Norm MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, a cameo, as I've, as I've said to everyone, flies in the face of, of everything that is my family, which, <laughs> which is how I grew up, which is who would pay you to talk to them? Yeah. Directly to them. I will give you $10 to shut up. So I could finish watching All in the Family. But who would... I'll I can see someone accidentally tuning in to Love Lion of the Man Show and not I, knowing what's going on. I was 100% ignored by everyone in my family verbally. <laughs> and then I brought my act to junior high where I was told to sit down and shut up by every single teacher I ever had. Just stifle it. Bring it down. <laughs> shut up. Just stop talking. When we did the, uh, when we did the um, Powder Puff football game, uh, Mrs. Tani took the microphone away from me. She, she had enough. So enough she gave of, me the hook. I was, the Sandman came the out. Sand man. I, I was in front of a partisan crowd. I had a full bleachers full of, full of people. I was dressed as a cheerleader, and I got myself a hot mic, and I was going to town, and she was like, get wow. it. Give me that mic back. <laughs> I was literally told that when I got onto a construction site, I had my foreman would just walk by me and go, stop talking. And then he'd just keep, he'd keep walking again. So the, the notion that someone pays you to talk to them is so antithetical to yeah. anything I've ever experienced. Well, it was the sweetest thing. And I was like, I didn't know he had that kind of, it was just nice. It was real nice.
Well, you know, the thing about cameos is some sometimes <laughs> there's the funny ones. You go roast my friend Fred. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the Ravens. Yeah. And then that's about it. It's like, how do I yeah. roast hey. someone? Roast the unborn. Like, how do I roast this guy? What kind of name is Fred? Ugh. Like, you got to give me some stuff if you want me to. I can't just roast him without knowing. So that you get the roast. Yes, yes. But then you get the one of the guys recovering from cancer. Yeah, just, yeah, right. Found out, or mm. you know, I've got the ones where the guys have alcoholic yeah. and he needs help yes. and and he's not he's a good guy but not when he gets drunk and he wants to mm-hmm. he wants someone to talk to it's, and it's, it's it's amazing yeah yeah they're not it's not just shits and no. giggles that's what and there's probably there's a, a, another category that i would imagine men don't get a request a lot of but i do which is it's always for somebody it's for my mom yes. it's for my yes. friend no dudes are like hey can you just say hi to me Oh, Tell really? Me happy Wednesday. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. You know, it's my birthday. I'd love a little uh, little Marilyn Monroe. Oh, a really? lot of guys do it for themselves yeah. to the ladies on Cameo. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. I would that. never have that kind of self-esteem no. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, tell someone to direct one toward me. <laughs> so, yeah, you must experience the whole rainbow oh. of emotions on those things right yeah i had li- recently somebody literally on her on her dying bed she was dying and i oh. and then you have to think about what you're going to say because yeah you, know, you got to get it right yeah nail, nail the tone yeah. yeah do you have you noticed a certain have you noticed an increase in like since your book came out like people are reaching out with similar problems or issues yeah, yeah, or yeah. hey man I, I you know I could use a little help or Yeah, a lot of a lot of mental health. I imagine it would be. A lot of mental health and you got to be very careful cuz I always have to say uh, get you know professional help first. This mm-hmm. is my advice cuz you don't want to say the wrong thing and then it's it's a little scary there with the mental health. I'm just putting this out there. Um I have, on more than one occasion, not charged for the ones that have to do with the person with the cancer or the survivors of incest or the... Uh, I don't want this to become a trend. <laughs> <laughs> this is a one-time deal only, the non-charging for the, for the you know, sure. for the sad for And the you sad know what cases. I don't like either, Ed? I don't know how you deal with it. I don't like tips. Oh, there's tips. Mm. I forgot. Oh, like, indeed, there are tips. Oh, they, yeah. They say they give you a twenty, like twenty bucks, ten bucks. I don't, I don't need the tip. I'm cool. The cost is just the cost. Yeah, mm. I'm good with all that. Mm. It's, it's baked into the cost. Like they got party of six. But it means you're doing yeah. that. They love it right. so much that they're going to yeah. add it. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know much how anything works other than I get told by Chris every once in a while. You got five of these to knock out. <laughs> But it actually, it helps to be a talker for a living because you just give me the beats. I'll, yeah, regurg- yeah, exactly. I'll regurgitate them. Yeah. What do you, uh, when you, what's the schedule like? Do you get your scripts the night before? Uh, I mean, you got to turn everything around so fast, yeah, right? Yeah, I get, I get the script like um, five days before. Um, I don't look at it till the night before because <laughs> I don't want to get upset. Is is there is there a, uh, a, a pardon me I don't know maybe this is uh, sacrilege but is there such a thing as a teleprompter anywhere around there, there? used to be there used to be um, maybe on other shows I've heard there is not on our show and the the toughest thing for me was when sometimes I'd forget to I I learned a different script like one time this happened and I thought I would be Marlon Brando and put the dialogue all over the set. Oh, yeah, have, have uh, Robert Duvall yeah. wear the cue card. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a great photograph. And it was, a, it was a son of a bitch, man. I couldn't, I couldn't, it was not good. You know, it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm basing it on the great Jimmy Kimmel, who he doesn't want to memorize stuff. Memor- the, if you really think about the part, you know, most creative folks started off life as bad students yeah. most and 
the reason you're a bad student, ostensibly, is because you don't want to memorize shit. Mm. I mean, <laughs> what do you have to do? Take this book, mm -hmm. go home, read the chapter on the Civil come War, memorize Regurgitate. it, and then come back, and then we're going to have a quiz on the Civil War. Yeah. And what makes a good student versus me is I'm not going home and yeah. reading this fucking chapter. I don't want to have to right. memorize right. all this shit. It feel, and, and it's the one time... Show business really feels like you're back in the ninth grade and you're a shit student is when they give you a stack of pages right. and you go home. And there is no escaping that. There's no, I'll get my assistant to read it. You know, in a world right. where you can farm out everything, you do <clears throat> a sitcom I, you know, it's 37 pages. I did a pilot. I had dialogue on every single yeah. page. You can't escape it. It's the biggest pain in the ass ever. They assign a dialogue guy to follow you around, basically run beats, right. run beats, run beats. It, it is, you're just thrust back into the ninth grade as a shit I, student. I would imagine every day on set, maybe for both of you guys, is like you're giving an oral report every day. Every day is book report day. You know, and it's like the, sh and, the light shining on me, and it's not going to get off until I nail this whatever line. And I was horrible. And I, I cheated my way through all four years last of high school. Cheated my way. every Got in trouble all the time. Um, so I understand that. But and on a soap, I'm learning... 20, 30 pages a day. Ugh. This isn't a movie. I've done where it's like half a page a day. Mm. You know, uh, this, this is 30 pages every day. And after all, but it gets easier. I'll bet if they did a study of soap stars, long running soap stars and Alzheimer's, I bet you'd find, like they say, the people that play the New York Times yeah, crossword yeah. every day. Like, I, I, I feel your brain would be nimble into your Christine. 80s if you if you woke up five days a week and had to memorize yeah, 30 but, pages of dialogue. Well, let me tell you, my dad just died of, uh, he had Alzheimer's. Um, and the thing about with me is I can do these 50 pages easy, but I'm forgetting everything now, man. Oh, it's kicking something. I don't kicking know. In. I went to this dude to check me out. He said, I'm, I don't have all time and stuff, but I'm forgetting people's names. But you ask me to memorize 50 pages, I can do it. But oh. everything else. Oh, well, this uh, doesn't make my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, question Do you think, is there any possibility that, like, I forget how many years it was. I, forgive me, 30 years or yeah. so of lithium. Was that possibly, does that have a long, I don't know, does that have a long lasting effect? I'm going to check that Ask your doctor. Out. Yeah, I've been taking lithium now for 28 years. There you go. Straight. Well, we've also talked about, I can't remember who on the show said this, but it's so logical. It's right in front of our face and we don't even think about it. That if you're, say, 60 years old, you now have 60 years worth of information stuffed into the same size brain as opposed to a 20-year-old. So it's not necessarily yeah. that anything on you is deteriorating. You just have more files to go through. And if you don't need it at the moment, like that person's name, it, it, you just have no reason to access it the way you used to access things. Gina's right. She's smart. Hard drive full, man. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's like, it's Lit, it's not Latin X, it's Latinx. I'm like, okay, I, I don't need another fucking thing in my fucking head that some 22 year old shat out four months ago that I have to commit to memory now. Just think about all the movement and what, like, labeling. Uh, you know, you, you, you think about what you have to do race, or, you know, it's, oh no, in an um, incest uh, survivor. Not a, not a victim. You know, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of corrections that everyone is having to make. Uh, look no further than the NFL. They, Bob Lilly was a star in the NFL. That's an easy name. Hey, what's your name? Bob. One of the easy. Last name Lilly. Now there's the depostrophes. <laughs> you know, I, I got to fucking memorize it. Guys, Ladanian Tom. The, 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 <laughs> yeah. There was a million names in the NFL. Roger Staubach. Boom. Mel Ott was Mel a baseball Ott. Hall of Famer. That's right. One, Jimmy Fox. One or two syllables, maybe a you know, single syllable first name. Oh. Bobby Gritch. Angel Star. Ron Say. Ron Say. Ron Say right. One fucking syllable. I know these people. <laughs>
You're a cowboy fan then. Now you got a bunch of Venezuelan guys in there and stuff. I don't know the fuck. Who could could commit all this to memory? (laughs) It's too much. Too many names. And there's too many celebrities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's one million shows that I haven't seen. I have to memorize everyone's name. That's tough. The names are hard to to, to memorize. I can memorize uh, dialogue and stuff because I've been doing the same character for 28 years. It's it's pretty easy. What's the state of soaps? Are people watching them in real time like they used to, or are well, they OJ Simpson, DVRing them? OJ Simpson killed pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he Go killed on. soaps. <laughs> yeah, he killed soaps. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> right. Uh, because when he came on, you know, we were at about a, you know, as far as millions of people, about six, seven, eight million people watching. Or, or and then he came on. We went down to like five, and, and we started. Uh. Now we're at a two, maybe two, three million. So all the unemployable audience went over. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, the like the live audience of the View or something. These are unemployable people. They all went to the OJ trial because that was the big deal. People yeah. sit home and watch the OJ yeah, trial. Yeah, during during uh, that period, we had one of the best storylines ever, an eight storyline. And the beauty about soap operas is you can you can start day one and end in a year and kill somebody off like real time. Can't do that in any other medium, right? So right. that we had some beautiful stuff, eight stuff. Every time great stuff would come, LJ yeah. did, did something. Somebody was in court. So that whole year was wasted. It's and then that's right when there. reality TV pretty much came in, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe well, OJ think... ushered that in. Yeah. I mean, it's ultimate reality TV watching right. court. Yeah. No, you're right. Right. I just had this thought that you you both have so much more in common than you may realize because radio personalities and soap opera actors have this very unique intimacy with the person watching or listening that, you know, how many times do we get? I feel like I know you, I, yeah, you're in yeah. my house every day. And more than a movie star where you might see a movie, you know, once, twice a year, you are an intimate part of their life. And growing up watching you and and loving, you know, all my children, General Hospital, everything, um, I've seen some of the people and their vim and vigor and love and lust for for you and for other soap opera characters. Have you ever had to talk somebody down? Let's say, uh, let's let's say a super fan, uh, somebody a little overzealous who really really thought that you were in their life because I know it happens. Okay, I got a story that's actually in my book. Uh, I had a stalker who who thought she was my wife Paula. Oh, my God. And she wrote letters saying, I'm going to come get my kids. She was mentally ill. Yeah, she she's schizophrenic. Um, and my wife was petrified. She'd show up at my work and say she was my wife. And, they'd, oh, yeah. they'd, and then she'd call at work and stuff. So my wife, we bought a German Shepherd from Germany. Oh, one of oh, them. Yeah. <laughs> And it was it was afraid of a mouse straight from the factory. <laughs> it was like one of those ones that are in the back of like Forbes magazine. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. And, I don't know. And, I, well, I, th- maybe this one wasn't, mm. and it just and so didn't work. So Pollock bought a. Gu- we were just petrified, and then finally, uh, we had a detective go to her hospital. They finally put her in the hospital. And it was very difficult to get help because unless you you get hurt or killed, I guess. Right. You can't. Well, get the hurt. laws basically we can't do anything right. until, until they, they kill you. Them. Right. Yes. Right. So the detect finally Paula got a detective. He went to her her room. She was watching General Hospital. Yikes. He walks in and he goes, "Hi." She goes, "Shh, shh, shh. that's my husband on the screen." Oh boy. And he goes, "What's what's your name?" She, she said, "Paula." So then we went to court. Long story short, um, she's been in, you know, whatever it is, a uh, hospital for that long. I, you know, I've never had a stalker, but there's a flattering aspect to it. You know? <laughs> hey, 
I'll put it right up there with no gay guys ever asked if, you know, hit on me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you could say it might be annoying or something, but there is a certain amount of flattery there. It would be a nice, there. you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of endorsement I, of your looks. If, if you just said, this guy's got a lot of stalkers and a lot of homos hitting on him, you'd go, well, that's a pretty good looking dude. I mean, you'd have to, right? I mean, the, wide appeal. What another be conclusion like, would there be? Would you think, oh, that guy's short and super squatty? Mm -hmm. Probably has bad hygiene. No. Look, this guy's a big star, and he's good Matt looking. Idol. Mass appeal. So, yeah. if a lot of stalkers and a lot of gay dudes hitting on you is a good thing, I mean, it's a flattering thing. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, not to take away from your experience. No, no, but I've just had one, so I don't know what that. Uh... Yeah, Doctor Drew had one. They don't. That's it. Can be. She'd show up. Yeah. She'd show up to Love Line. She'd be. Uh, do you remember this, Brian? No, I think it was not during my time. He had a stalker. And who, I remember yes, I remember it, but I wasn't there for that. She would come out from Sacramento, I yeah, think, or Stockton, or just, one somewhere of the, one in of that those, area, and, and uh, she'd take the bus. I mean, as soon as we're done with that bullet train. <laughs> She'll hop on that baby, but <laughs> blessing. she would like take the bus out from Stockton or Sacramento or something, and just be hanging out in the parking lot. And uh, we didn't have any security of any kind, it's or Giovanni wow. in, a, in a wig, yeah, or anything. It was <laughs> like we'd finish that show, Culver City, midnight Sunday night, boop. First off, you guys should experience Culver City in 1996. I was going to say. At it's midnight. Hot. There's people everywhere now. Back then, ghost town. Ghost town. You really? Just, you, just, oh, yeah. you just walk out and you just walk into an unlit parking lot. And whoever was there was there. I mean, there were people. There were oftentimes people there. One of uh, Drew Stocker was there. I had somebody waiting just just waiting they just wait for you to walk out to your car that one of my uh i think one of my biggest drew arguments or love line arguments was I, at a certain point you know it'd be like i remember like kathy griffin would be walking out there'd be some weird dude like standing out there <laughs> wanting an autograph or something and i said hey we need a security guy to, to like stand by this door from about 9 30 at night to about 12 10 at night because we have celebrities coming through here drew's got a stalker i had some weirdo cost me by the car so we need somebody here and they're like yeah all right and i was like all right listen here's the hard out one week from today there must be a security guy yeah. here you have one week one week and they said yeah 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 and i said okay now listen if i come pulling up one week from now and i don't see security guy I'm not going to call you and tell you I'm not going to do the show because I'm just going to go home. And that'll be that. You can figure out where I am. And, uh, of course, it was K-Rock and Westwood One and everything. There was no security yeah. guy in a week. And Drew went in, and then I just turned around and went home. And Drew was like, I'll give him another few days. And I'm like, Drew, you don't understand how to motivate. These people cannot be motivated. So I went home, and uh, they did get a security guard. That was an interesting big he heavy set guy, and he used to sleep on the sofa <laughs> right by the front door. He was passed he really out. solved the problem. And he <laughs> he was a big man, and he snored comically loud. And so at a certain point, I said, "We got to get a thirty foot mic cord, and I got to walk <laughs> it out to this guy, and I got to set the we mic audio un this. underneath him." And uh, he snored into the mic for a while, and then he got fired. <laughs> Which I felt bad about, but oh, well, at the same time, yeah, at the same time, and really, honestly, if you're talking about less qualifications for security guards, staying awake at or near the top, yeah, I would say, and your it's work day is from you know, it's from nine thirty to twelve oh five. You know, you just have to stay awake during that, <laughs> you know, that that window yeah. there. But yeah. he uh, he was sawing sawing big time logs and. uh I don't know. You could probably find that somewhere, Chris. I don't know. Geo probably has it. But um, so you got one stalker. Drew got one stalker. But, you know, fans of the, you know, GH, especially, as you were saying, the most loyal fans. And, and you know, they've been, we've been on air for 58 years. 58 years. That's 58 years, General Hospital. 
It's crazy. Related question. I see here on, on the bio, your wife is your agent or has been or was. or Yeah. My, yeah. Wa- my wife is. Uh, is that I, how you met? I met my wife. She was at Mar- She was working at Marigold around. She was uh, 16. And I walked in. That's an agency out here? <laughs> <laughs> I walked in. She's dancing. And I was 21. She was very cute. And I asked her out. Then I said, you know, she's too young. Wait, is Mary Go Round a... It's a... Oh, you don't know Mary Go... Mary no. Go Round's a, uh, like a clothing store. No, no shit. Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. assumed we saw her at a carnival. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> now we're... And uh, I said, no. So I stood her up. And then a year later, after I had been in a mental institution and... A lot went, lot went down. I went back in, and she was still working there. And she was seventeen now, and asked her out. Brought her. We, we went out had, at, to my house. We had a great time, and I'll never forget. I kissed her, and I said, "Damn, I think this. She's amazing." And we've been together for over thirty-five years. That's really awesome. Wow. Yeah. Well, did she? Become an agent at your sort of, you know, like, hey, oh, you no, do no, this? she became my agent in the last maybe five years. Oh, four okay. years. I didn't she know has she... her own agency. Uh huh. Um, and embrace real artists. Let me give it a plug. Yeah. And, uh, but she's been with me through, through it all. The, the mental, you know, I'm sure, I don't know if you know, but we've been through some tough times. Yeah, uh, she sounds like a saint. Yeah, she is a saint. And like, I, I was thinking about today. For anybody who maybe is upset at my wife for whatever reason, the fact that she just saved my life is enough to say, wow, great woman, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. she's, you know. I'll cut her a free cameo after this. <laughs> <laughs> well done. She's <laughs> that good. That's, that's amazing. It's, it's a lot to go through, to be with a man who, uh, you know, lives with bipolar and anxiety and everything. It's, it's a lot. And, the last, during the pandemic, uh, I, I could see that after four months, she was, it was tough on her. Sure. Real, real tough on her. Like, she did, she kind of didn't know where she was going to go. You know? Do you have any thoughts about uh, Richard Berge, the guy who just got canned from uh, The Young and the Restless? Because he came out of quarantine, I guess, early? Or not as prescribed by the CDC, but, but as the producers I don't know much about show. that. Uh, I do know that my, you know, two friends are not on the show, Steve Burton and yeah, Ingo, Steve Burton and what's the other guy? Ingo Rademacher. That's right. Um, all I can say is this: you know, these are two guys that uh, I'm very close, I'm very close with. They and, didn't want to get vaccinated. Right. They didn't want the mandate. And look, I don't have their belief. I got vaccinated, um, but I it, it takes a lot of. Can I say balls? Mm-hmm. Sure. It takes a lot of balls to to walk away from, a, you know, twenty Steady years. Steady gig, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm all you know. I I was I was saying this. Uh, I was having this discussion with some uh, some friends watching football on Sunday, and uh, we were talking about COVID and like who. Who surprised you the most in a reaction toward it or a reaction against it or just in a behavior that wouldn't sit, that didn't seem consistent with them? Like um, Mike August, his approach to COVID was exactly how I thought Mike Mm -hmm. August's approach (laughs) was. Um, Mine was completely consistent with however anyone would think of. I would react to COVID, which was no reaction. Uh, Danny Two Sheets had a big reaction to it, which is a little mm-hmm. surprising to me. I he's you know I, I didn't see that one coming. So we were talking about like who surprised you and who didn't. Uh, a name came up. I'll leave his name out, but a oh. name came up of a guy who didn't get didn't want the vax mandate or didn't do it and turn his back, quit quit his job. And I said in the they were kind of going, well, he should have done it, or maybe he's a dick for not doing it. And I just said, well, at least you know he believes it. 
Like, yeah. uh, you know, when when LeBron James is telling everyone to take it easy on China, does he believe it yeah. or is this just a money? This is a money thing. There's so Business many people decision. do. You don't know what they think because it's a money. It's a money thing. You know exactly what somebody thinks when they go, I shall turn my back on this paycheck and I shall go. You can agree or you can disagree, right, right. but you least, you know, they're sincere. Yeah. Like, that's exactly what they're thinking. Anybody who turns their back on money you will know exactly how they feel versus whatever you hear. It's whoever talking yeah. about what, where you go, does he really believe that? Or is that just a, some, is this a money grip? You know, like some attorney going, I demand justice, right? Sure. You want to, you want a payday. Right. Yeah. So you got to give them that they believe it. And they're, they, when you turn your back on money, at least, at least we know that's what you believe. Yeah. I don't have that kind of courage or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll say balls again. I'm going to get in trouble for saying balls. Not, yeah, not say by anybody, but my wife's going to be like, why'd you say that? Mm. Um, but yeah, and uh, I don't have their belief. They have it. They did it. And that's, it, it, you know. Still but we know it's their belief. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, we'll see if we can find the snoring guy. It's going to be a, yeah, I'm working with a you geo right thing. Yeah. But uh, we'll take a quick break. Yep. Come back. We'll do the news right after this. Let's talk about Navient. That is the, uh, the the firm, let's say, that was a sort of a spinoff from um, Sally May, and they have agreed to pay 1.7 billion dollars in student loans. It's part of the settlement with 39 states that accused the company of lending to people who they knew couldn't repay. Uh, this resolves six outstanding lawsuits against Navient. The company will also make a one-time payment of $145 million to the states. So if if this, first of all, this definitely affected me. I, I, I would have loved to have gotten in on this, but I ended up paying all my debts off. So the state officials said Navient promised to help struggling borrowers find affordable repayment plans, but instead steered them into expensive long-term repayments. I can tell you what those are. They're called forbearance and they oh. throw them at you like crazy. Put everything on hold. Don't worry about it. But oh, by the way, your interest will keep accruing and accruing and accruing. Um, so this takes care of almost 70,000 student loans. As part of the agreement, um, Navient admits no wrongdoing. The um, Well, you probably admit wrong, uh -huh. wrongdoing when you cut a check for a billion dollars. Thank you. But we are a wacky, fucked up society, which is nonstop talk about student loans or forgiving student loans. So I, I don't like people being gouged. But on the other hand, AOC or whoever, don't be indignant about paying student loans. Uh, people agreed to go to this place to get an education, possibly dental school or something. It's like some of these people are paying, getting training, and then taking that money out into the free market right. and, and making money. It shouldn't be indignant. Like, oh, what are, we got to pay off these things. Uh you don't, but they shouldn't be predatory and they shouldn't be they shouldn't be gouging. Everyone always talks about the student loans. It's ridiculous. It's fifty thousand dollars. Anyone want to give any attention to the colleges? Why is it fifty thousand bucks mm -hmm. or two or a year or two hundred thousand for a four year, whatever? Like everyone just sits around. It'd be like if we were if we we're going after, let's just say, car companies because they were loaning money in a predatory fashion, but someone should ask the question, why does the Ford F-150 pickup truck cost $500,000? Yeah. That's that second, that's question number two. Question yes. number one is yes. you're paying 22% on a shit loan, fine. Question number two, why do you, why does it cost $175,000 to go to this four year place that has an endowment of $30 billion? Why, why are they off the hook? Can we get that? Yes. How about we get that price down? You won't have to borrow as much. Yeah. It's all part of the same racket. It's it's They're weird. They never. It's not. It's like student loans, student loans, student loans. <laughs> what are they getting a loan for? They're getting a loan for a college, which is way too fucking expensive. Yeah. Why don't we focus a little energy there? No, well, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. And I, I've told you the story before. I'll never forget when on my last morning show when we found out that this was the end of the road and get your affairs in order. And I was making some pretty nice change for what I was used to. The last check I wrote was about $35,000 to pay off my college loans. And it hurt 
but it was done. And I was so proud of myself because I said, you know, this is the one time I know I can do this right now. My friends lit me up told me I was an idiot. I was called an idiot online. This is stupid. You could let it run out. If you let it run out long enough, it goes away. And I was, I was like, I don't know. That's not really how I handle my business. I was pretty proud of that. It's a weird mixed message as a society too, which is, Hey, 18 year old, we're going to get you out of the gate by taking a loan for something. And then we'll encourage you never to pay it back. Correct. Going, well, how's that going to work moving forward? you know, mortgages and car payments. And then we should get you used to doing this. Let's get the prices down, get the loans worked out. I am so glad. I I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Has college ever meant less just in general? College used to be a thing. He's going yeah. off to college. Still, you know? Especially but, now it's all virtual. You know, so much yeah, of you're virtual. You're not getting the college but experience. You're still, it's virtual, but you're still paying the yeah, same amount exactly. to sit at home and do it on the computer. There's a lot of diminishing returns. Yeah, I also feel like the amount of non-college educated people or the people with two years of school who dropped out and started their own whatever Silicon Valley company or whatever, like, somehow the, the un, you know, when I was growing up, the college educated were sort of the heroes. Now right. it's the entrepreneur mavericks that are the, the heroes. Yeah. We've shifted and obviously the more people who go, you know, it's it's like the more people who win a Heisman Trophy, the less a Heisman Trophy's ever, you know, it, it was a big deal to have a Heisman Trophy. It's it's a good thing now, but now that 100 people have won it, it's, it diminishes a little bit. If everyone's going to have a college education, then it's not going to be a, a thing anymore. I really just don't want well, to pay for it. No, sorry. <laughs> trying to talk my kids and out. I don't, I don't know how many Canadian friends you have, but I didn't know there was a difference between calling something college or university, university. but they will smack you in the face if you say, so where'd you go to college? I didn't go to college. I went to university because yeah. one indicates apparently a trade school and one indicates a university. Well, and don't say the ninth grade. It's grade nine. Grade In nine. Canada. You're yeah. right. They're just, right. they're just fucking with us. So they poured me a bag of milk. We talked about it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, bags of milk. Uh, Sirhan Sirhan assassinated Robert F. Kennedy Sr. in L.A. in 1968, had his parole request denied by yep, California Governor Gavin Newsom. Uh, although California parole commissioners recommended the 77-year-old be released during a hearing in August last year, Newsom said no. He wrote this very passionate defense saying that uh, Sirhan remains a potent symbol of political violence. Six out of nine of RFK's children released a statement supporting Newsom's decision. However, Douglas Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who we've had on, were not listed as both of them have spoken out in favor of releasing Sirhan, but uh, to no avail. Let's let him out have him pick up garbage by the yeah. train tracks, number one. Technically out. Number two, I'm saying this, and it's recorded for posterity. Yeah. My kids are listening to this shit, and I'm ever assassinated, and then years later, you're there making a case for my yeah. assassin to go free. <laughs> I, I, You're not going to be buried at the, the family plot. You will haunt their I, ass. I will haunt your ass. You do not make a case for the guy who assassinated me to get let out. Chris Locks want to stay behind bars. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he's not even 80, sir. He's, no. he's 77. 77. He was a kid when he, yeah. I mean, he was like 26 or something. Yeah. Or whatever it was. Yeah. He was young. Yeah. 1968. Yeah. Um, even younger. Yeah. And let's get back on lawsuits. I thought we had put this baby to bed, no pun intended, but we have not. The suit against the uh, against Nirvana filed by Spencer Eldon. He was the baby on the Nevermind cover. It's back on, baby. Rolling Stone reports that Eldon's second amended complaint was filed late Wednesday and claims that the band and other parties, quote, intentionally commercially marketed child pornography depicting Spencer and leveraged it promoting uh, the Nevermind album while earning tens of millions of dollars. This new complaint drops a claim related to sex trafficking, where the suit alleged uh, alleged that the defendants did knowingly benefit from participating in a sex trafficking venture. So they dropped that part, but the child porn uh, 
defense. What, what still hurts back this on. guy's case, and by the way, nothing. There's no greater advertisement of loser than trying to look back 30 years and mm-hmm. cash, cash mm-hmm. a check. You know, number one suggests you're you're not thriving in real time, <laughs> but. This guy did tons of promotional shit where like, right. hey, you're the guy. So he got paid yeah. for doing the, hey, you're the guy. So it's hard to talk about the deep emotional wounds when you're posing in a swimming pool and <laughs> right. having, have, you know, local radio stunts and things like Doesn't that. Does he have a tattoo? The... I think, I think he does. It's just, it's, uh. it's tough when you've cashed a few checks on being that guy to explain you're exploited and you're emotionally damaged by it. So, right. Mm -hmm. Well, Kanye West is accused of battery after an altercation early Thursday morning. Uh, TMZ reports that he allegedly punched a fan after a verbal argument in downtown L.A. around 3 a.m. Sources say he pushed and punched a man, which would be considered a misdemeanor battery. If convicted, he could face six months in jail. Fox 11 reports that he pushed the fan to the ground after being asked for an autograph. Not a great look. I saw the footage. Uh, the guy, the guy got punched or pushed or whatever. Flop artist. Oh, no. full flop. European full basketball flop. player. LeBron. Yeah. You're a, you're a league basketball guy. He's a flopper. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you can tell all the floppers, the floppers stay down. They just like <laughs> lay, they lay there because they <laughs> look, you can get shoved. You can even get punched, but when you stay down, so they're the ones like, you know, they're the ones that like, like when, um, you know, Britney Spears is driving her car and the flashbulbs are going off behind Craig's at night. And they're the one, oh, he ran over my uh, foot. And then they fall right. down. The comically, yeah, leap but, out but the they way. stay down. Yeah. Right. Anyone who stays down. I mean, look, if you got a fucking bone coming out of your shin, <laughs> fine. But right. anyone else, you get pushed down or you get punched or you, you get your foot run over by Britney Spears. You don't stay down. You're pretty crazy. Right. You're, trying to You're on a filthy sidewalk. You just lay there. And I think uh, then we had some other crazy woman was following him around. But the guy... Tough night down The to guy eat. just stayed down there <laughs> and he was like, Can somebody is some at some point he goes, Is somebody gonna call an ambulance? Cause he needs to be laying down when the ambulance shows right. up. You can't pop up back yeah. to your feet and get a big fat fucking payday from Kanye. <laughs> right. And if you don't think people can pop up. Uh, how many fucking heavyweight fights have you seen where a guy just got decked, boom, down on the ground? Right. He got up and under 10. Right. How right. many football collisions right. you seen where a guy just got lit up and it's like back up onto his feet? This guy's just laying there. He's got his hands. Show me this guy He's again. He's on his phone. Yeah, I, didn't, I never saw him get... There's a visual. You won't see him get punched. Oh, okay. Somebody goes, call an ambulance or, or something <laughs> like that. He, uh, there's no blood, it doesn't, no bone sticking out. He's just, he's just there. Yeah. Yeah. So the rule is if they stay down, they're either faking (laughs) or dead. Either way, you can't help them. What? Crazy lady. No, no, who was supposed to talk to her? Why did he just do that? (laughs) What is wrong with him? It's kind of it was. That kind of answers the question. Guy's just laying on the ground. I'm gonna say to. Can you? Oh, you cut it right. Please call the cops. Oh, there you go. Right. He's gonna yeah. lay on the ground. God, cut it a second early. Yeah, he's just gonna lay there until they call the cops. That's great. It's a flopper. Well, I don't mean to upset you further and it sounds like this you is made why it. i could never yeah. be on any tv show ever because i was watching this on tmz and you're like oh kanye oh man you punch a stranger you get into trouble this guy's on the ground man this guy's this guy's hurt i'd be like yeah he's a flopper yeah. come on you don't lay <laughs> this horse shit look you don't lay on the ground that's the whole thing you get up uh, I just got this breaking news update. We can get into it more another day if you want. But it, remember the name Spencer. Sh- Spencer Eldon has a Nevermind tattoo across his chest. So. There it is. Jeez. Oh, we. The- oh, sorry. We have the Love Line snoring. All now. right. Oh. Breaking news. Yes. Breaking this, is, news. this is a long 
clip. Recently on Earth. <laughs> Recently on Earth. Yes, uh, it really is because Geo just got the security cam footage three years ago. Uh, uh, right. So we'll put it up. Um, so uh, you can go ahead, Ryan. So. Uh, you actually went out there and tried to get him snoring. You got the longer mic cable. You left the studio, but he woke up, so you didn't. You didn't get him. I could have got pepper spray. Yeah. So, uh, so you had Danielle put a mic by him, and you guys would check. Who's you, Danielle? Uh, that's a, that's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah someone named Danielle. Or someone, you had somebody else put a mic. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Yeah. yeah maybe. Oh, maybe it was somebody else. Uh, but you put. You had someone put a mic there, and you would just check in on that mic. Oh, okay. Well. So here's right. you guys. It was a studio. snore mic. Yeah. It will be. All right, hey, uh, let's check back in with the snore mics. He's not. He's not going. <laughs> not going hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> this could replace year? fart humor for you, Adam. Uh, it's, it's, it's endlessly oh, music. Oh, oh, oh. What year? He knows we're talking about. Two thousand. <laughs> no. No. We're live on the air, by the way. This is the show. Three hundred markets. <laughs> this is our uh, security guard, by the way. He's out on the sofa. He sleeps every night. Uh, <laughs> it's a two-hour show. He gets two and a half hours sleep every night. No greater compliment to a host, by the way. Here, here's the good news. Uh, the, the, I guess the more startling news. Uh, that's our best guard. <laughs> He's the good one. I forgot we had. A He's the one it. with the strong work ethic. He would be the uh, what you call the stalwart of the uh, of the group of guards team. that uh, we get. The oh, crack, the crack team we've got. Oh my God! You, yeah, uh, you should have seen how pissed off he was last night because they're doing construction out there and he couldn't sleep on his little couch. <laughs> so they had planks of wood on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, easy? yeah. You yeah, know, Anderson. there's nothing more upsetting. Uh, I know this is as, uh, as someone who's been employed for about 20 years they're having now. Having to do your job. Well, you show up at work and some guy spread his ass all over your good napping spot. <laughs> You know how frustrating that can be? You come in, there's a piece of drywall and some uh, rough sawn cedar 1x6 TNG that's uh, sitting right in your good napping area. How are you supposed to get your nap in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. hey, you punch in, you want to you wanna, you wanna punch, punch out. out. Yeah. Right. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I tell you, he's got a real grievance with the union. If we find this son of a bitch... Who put his uh, wood material uh, on his napping spot? Uh, some heads are gonna roll. I'm surprised he hasn't written a letter. I would be outraged. If I was the mic him. wasn't even that <laughs> close to him. No, seriously, it's have some empathy. <laughs> Imagine you call me to work and someone has cluttered your nap your nap space. The mic's over six feet away. <laughs> Over six feet away. Yeah. Catching right. up tonight. Listen, if anyone wants to break in here and uh, have a shot at me and Drew, now's the time. I, I got to warn you, though, he's no. cranky when he wakes up. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to take a little break. We'll uh, check back with the. Uh, we just had the mic going all night. We just check back with it. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was six feet away from the guy because it was too scary to tell the person to go walk right up <laughs> underneath the person because he's a big dude. He could wake up. You're still holding a microphone. A couple uh, years He's definitely around. been claimed by sleep apnea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Swallowed his own tongue. Yeah. 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 If anybody wants to watch that security cam footage, it's on YouTube under Loveline episode number 1188. Wow. There it is. Big time. Amazing. Yeah. Wait, were you, Brian, you weren't there yet? Yeah, it was a couple of years, 18 months, say two years for my tenure, but uh, uh, I remember hearing legend of that. Yeah, it was a good episode. <laughs> it was a... It's called Found Humor. I was like, <laughs> my kind of humor. Get a mic with a 30 foot cord and somebody put it by. I guess I tried and he woke up. <laughs> so I went back in. All right, yeah, sorry. And, and it was someone named Danielle, so I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Greener maybe at the time. Yeah, probably. Uh, sorry, Gina, what do you got? Well, Pete Davidson's high-profile relationship with Kim Kardashian may be paying off even a little more. Reportedly, he is being considered to host the Oscars. A source tells Page Six his people are talking to producers. The source says the award show, which hasn't had a host in three years, is looking to reset and wants to bring in younger viewers. And because he co-hosted that New Year's Eve special with Miley Cyrus for NBC, that had 6.3 million viewers. They're thinking maybe he has the juice. Not a funny member of SNL. I saw that Miley Cyrus thing, too. I would say 99% of his jokes just fell flat, like bombed, no laughter, anything. I thought he was We awful. live in such a fucked up society. What did we decide? 
Oh, it, it, it would, if, if, look no further than Pete Davidson. Like, nobody gave a shit about... Pete Davidson was the least funny cast member from SNL, and then at some point, we all just went, oh, yeah, he's the coolest guy in the world. I'll make the case for this potentially work. I'm not a big Pete Davidson, not even a medium Pete Davidson fan, but obviously they get great writers, or at least seasoned writers. Uh, he's a good performer in the sense that, I don't know if you saw The King of Staten Island. I did. He was, he was good. In the he's a good actor. Movie. So yeah. maybe mm-hmm. there's a world where, you know, they get enough uh, talent surrounding. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, look, you got writer's rooms. I was in two of them. So you get a lot of writers. I also feel like a couple things. I feel like you have to, I feel the same way about uh, Kamala, which is, uh, or Kamala, sorry, our vice president. Over two? You got you to gotta, <laughs> you gotta earn your way to that spot. You can't just get shoved into that spot because it's hot, mm. it's cool, you know, whatever. I, I feel like... You got to earn your, you got to work your way into that, that spot. Harvey I, Weinstein. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's you right. you got to work your way up to that spot. I think James Franco's now, available. I, yeah. Oh, uh, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Adam, here's a hypothetical for you when, you know, not even talking about money, but you've written, like you said, you've written for the Oscars. Very exciting. You get a phone call. Adam, we need you to write for Pete Davidson. We would love to have you over here. He really needs the help. Could you do it? He's a big fan. Uh, I could write for anybody, but I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't. I, I don't I don't think he's going to be able to execute as well as we think. I do think he's a good actor or or solid or decent or solid or whatever. I, I saw the movie. Um, I don't know if he's up to... 3,000 people yeah. kind of thing. There's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts on those shows. I've, I've seen him stumble, bum stumble his way through SNL mm-hmm. sk- sketches. I don't know that he's the, you know, but the other thing about what we were alluding to before Oscars is a sense. You want to talk about school homework, yeah. oral report. Mm-hmm. It's like right. the biggest oral report of your life. Damn. It is, it is all consuming. There's jokes going back and forth at midnight. There's people dropping out and stepping up. And is so-and-so going to do is going to present or not going to present. Do we need jokes for this person? So-and-so now says they're not presenting. It's like, it is so fluid. And there's so many marks to hit and so there's so much preparation i think he's a more rip a bong load and plow a hottie kind of guy yeah. versus sitting at his desk all night you know working sending the emails out i mean you would get these emergency emails uh that uh cecily tyson is going to is <laughs> I don't know if she's not even alive. No, no, it's fine. Is she still with Cecily example. Tyson has agreed to you know, yeah. hand out the whatever it's award. Cool. We need jokes. And it'll be like, you know, the night before, whatever. It's just, it's a lot. I and don't know if, if they don't like the, the jokes. What happens if that they That usually don't? happens. They don't like. If they don't like the jokes, do you have to do another joke or they have to do it? They do. Your, your batting average on. It, uh, well, it doesn't mean they don't like the joke, but it is they can choose not to use the joke and they use one percent of uh, the jokes that get sent to them. Maybe less. Wow. <laughs> or, or not at all. It's a factory. It's there's 10 guys riding. Cecily Tyson is, is giving an award out and uh, 10 guys all write 13 jokes. Wow. And then then one of them is selected or none. <laughs> That's amazing. Cecily uh, died a year ago. Oh, good. Oh. But that would have worked in my example because we did oh, this God. a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, good for me. And just to be clear, I think both of your mean grandmas uh, know that it's pronounced Sicily. Sicily, it is. Yeah, I can hear <laughs> it, her. Like yeah, her it is Sicily Tyson. But but in a world where we get to put our own thing on everything. That's is right. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian hated every movie she was ever in. Just didn't like it. Yeah. Didn't like it. No Not fan. a fan. All right. Well, one more, Gina Grant. All right. Let's see. Well, I'll just do these two to, you know what? No, let's move on to this one because it's insane. And maybe we'll have our own Christy Bishop weigh in on it at some mm-hmm. point. Lay's will have a Super Bowl commercial for the first time in 17 years. And the snack food giant decided to mark the occasion by growing potatoes using dirt from 29 of the NFL stadiums. 
They use those potatoes to make Lay's Golden Grounds, which are NFL team branded <laughs> potato chips. Wow. Lay says only the Broncos, Bengals and Browns didn't allow their dirt to be used. 200 bags were produced for each team. And the only way to have a shot at one is you got to follow them on Twitter and use the hashtag Lay's Golden Grounds. I thought that all NFL stadiums used like AstroTurf, but apparently mm-hmm. some of them still have the dirt. It's dirt underneath somewhere. They got to find uh, you know, it. Dig yeah, deep they, couldn't, they couldn't get that. They, they're going to have to peel some carpet yeah. back. Or or it's just, yeah. it's going to be stupid. They're going to go in front of SoFi. They'll find one of the planters Gosh, yeah. and they'll just <laughs> the succulent. do something. Yeah. I, it's, I, there will not be at the 50-yard line <laughs> harvesting dirt. They'll find dirt somewhere. A potato some, growing. Somewhere, <laughs> yeah. And it's not midfield dirt. It's probably right. not playing field dirt. Because you either got the, the fake, fake turf, mm-hmm. or you have astro, or sorry, you have the sod, the real sod. It's an off to the side place. I'm yeah, surprised right. three teams didn't participate. Yeah, it you is think a with weird the sponsor. They'd be like, everyone on board. I am always curious when that algorithm pops up. Like, why these three teams? What's so special mm-hmm. about them? Browns, Do they have Bengals and Broncos? They have some yep. sort of concession deal. Oh uh, yeah, um, exclusive with. Uh, Doritos are Doritos, or right? Like Frito Lay, well, same company, right? That is Frito. Yeah. There's yeah. something. Do they have pirate something booty. with kettle chips or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's got to be a pirate booty. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> there's always a reason. It's never just uh, 20, 28 teams did this and then three didn't. Yeah. There's that that never makes sense. That doesn't exist in yeah. business. There will be a oh okay. They're a sponsor, when, yeah. right? That's the way yeah. it works. All right, let's so bring it. Have home. fun with those. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that the news. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Gina, Gina. <laughs> that was the news with Gina Grad. Well, let me tell you about Edmonds. Thanks to Edmonds for sponsoring this show. Car shopping is already confusing and stressful in 2022. Finding the right car is going to be even harder due to inventory shortages. Edmonds goes the extra mile, makes car buying easier with uh, honest reviews, video test drives, online shopping tools, and the latest consumer advice. These guys do long-term road tests of the cars. They buy their cars. Uh, They're not given their cars, so there's no bias, and they test the hell out of them. So if you're looking for something new, unbiased research, reviews, industry expertise, they've been doing it for over 50 years. They have a They have price guides. It's all in one place. Free online tools to compare vehicles and dealer quotes as well. And you can figure out your budget, your financing, get an appraisal for your trade-in, all at Edmunds. Right, Dawson? Car shopping can be overwhelming. Edmunds is here to help. Visit Edmunds.com and click on Edmunds Best Car Ratings to research and compare vehicles. That's E-D-M-U-N-D-S.com. Edmunds, we drive like it is. All right, you can go to uh, Brea. I'll be doing a show there on the 6th of February with Bill Shatner. We're filming it. Then I'll do another one with Dennis Quaid. If you want to come out, say hi. Oh, we're going to Spokane, Washington. Mm. Oh, that pop up. February 17th. Hey, just go to amcrawl.com. Lots of live shows all over the place. Maurice, well, you can listen to his show and watch his show MB State of Mind premiering this spring on industry industrymedia.com shoot him a tweet or an Instagram or cameo Maurice Bernard B-E-N-A-R-D good to talk to you my friend good to talk to you man so till next time it's Adam Carolla for Gina and Maurice and Bald saying mahalo so he's just putting porta potties on the sidewalk under the under the freeway overpass. All right, this is what happens. So we have a problem. It's a shit show. Can you do something about it? Does it come up in meetings? Or are we still just talking about being a beacon on the hill and transgender rights?